Bob Sledge does. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, finally, uh, this is the uh, final lecture of this talk. Very Sorry, I think the title page is wrong, but I thought this should be part A, but it is the design is wrong. Yeah, so this is part A, not seven of my lecture. Uh, it's not really final because I have a program session tonight. Uh, but the, the material of the program is not really directly related to this final lecture. But the final lecture uh, is solely a, devoted to, to the, my old paper published in 91. It's a very short paper, so I will I'll give you a complete proof of that result. So uh, that's uh, partially solves the problem posed uh, at the end of the previous lecture. So that is about the uh, whether the eigenvalues of the Gaussian symmetries in the commutative algebra belong to cycle of zero, and uh, it is yes for group case. So, uh, what causes the problem? Well, we have seen that in, in many cases, for example, in, we had an exercise session, uh, and the first exercise you encounter was to, to compute the eigenvalue of the Johnson graph. And the, the eigenvalues of the Johnson graph are uh, integers, and and most of the stronger regular graphs satisfy this. So, uh, if eigenvalues are integers, so there is no problem. They, they belong to rational, so certainly they belong to cyclotonic field. So, we need to look at the example where eigenvalues are not rational. The smallest one is the pentagon. So, this is a stronger regular graph on five vertices, and also it comes from the group. It is a dihedral group of, of order 10, acting uh, as a uh, rank 3 group, so the relations are indeed the two orbits of that dihedral group. And here are the adjacency matrices, they are circular matrices, and uh, identity matrix plus the A1, which is the adjacency matrix of the 5 cycle, and A2 is a complement. Okay, the, it's easy to find the eigenvalues of this uh, KD graph. Uh, well, if, if you can do this without knowing that it's KD graph, they, they are, of course, the one, one of the uh, principal eigenvalues that, that is from Peron for Benef eigenvalue, that is the valency of the graph is two, and the other two eigenvalues, uh, which I denote by theta plus minus, uh, this irrational number, minus 1 plus minus 0 and 5 divided by 2. So for, for the sake of the outcome readiness, I will uh, abbreviate these two irrational numbers as theta plus and theta minus. So A1 has these two eigenvalues. So correspondingly, uh, there are three primitive eigenvalues, and uh, you can write down the uh, a1 has a linear combination of primitive eigenpotents, and then immediately uh, you can also write down the other adjacent symmetries in terms of primitive eigenpotents. Uh, so, the, so this is the eigenmatrix P. So you do have an irrational eigenvalue, so you do have an irrational entry in the eigenmatrix. But the uh, uh, square root of the five. Of course, it comes from the fifth root of unity, so it, it, it does belong to the cyclotomic field. So this, is, this simple example certainly do not give a counter example to the open problem. But now uh, let's look at the symmetry of this uh, eigenmatrix. You have two by two block here, uh, which look symmetric. 
So what do I mean? Uh, in, 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 in algebraic number theory, you really don't distinguish these two uh, conjugate algebraic numbers. So, so the field we are interested in, the, the, the field obtained by um, adjoining the square root of 5 to the rational. So I denote this field by f. So this f consists of all uh, irrational numbers of the form a plus b square root of 5 where A and B are rational numbers. You can uh, simply uh, add and multiply and even divide if the denominator is not zero. So it forms a field. Uh, you may think of this as a subfield of complex number or subfield of real numbers, but uh, you don't even have to know real number or complex numbers. You may construct this field as a quotient of the polynomial ring. Qx divided by this maximum value x squared minus 5. So this is a field. And uh, if you consider this field abstractly, then you, there is no distinction between uh, square root of 5 and negative square root of 5 because there is an automorphism which interchange things to. So if we interchange it as this square root of 5 and minus square root of 5, then you, you interchange these, the two eigenvalues, theta plus and theta minus, and so uh, that is the, uh, the reason for the symmetry. So um, because the, the adjacency matrices have these theta, to theta plus minus the eigenvalue, and they, be, uh, they belong to the field F, which is much smaller than a complex number field, I can consider the uh, adjacent symmetries over this field, not over the complex numbers. Because I can uh, write the eigenvalence with only using these coefficients from F. So instead of considering the, com uh, the adjacency algebra over the complex numbers, I, I now work over this rather small field, it's just a quadratic extension of the, the field of rational numbers. So this adjacency algebra is now a sub-algebra of 5 by 5 matrices over this field F. So of course this eigenmatrix is a 3 by 3 matrix with entries in F. Then what is the symmetry I, I was talking about? So the theta plus and theta minus are indistinguishable in this field because of this uh, automorphism. That amounts to exchanging two eigenspaces. Well, that is uh, A1 has two algebraic conjugate eigenvalues, and uh, this auto field automorphism exchanged these two. So that means that it exchanges the eigenpotents E1 and E2, or in other words, it switches this second or third column over first and second column if you count the columns from the zeros. So this automorphism of the field of the adjacency algebra, or it induces this this sigma induces an automorphism of this adjacency algebra. And it permutes primitive eigenpotents of F R. That is, the sigma is originally an automorphism of the field, but our algebra is a, consists of matrices with entries in F. So you can apply sigma entry wise to all the matrices in F, so you get a new matrix. And um, if you apply that, then this matrix, 5 by 5 matrix E1 is changed to E2. So that's uh, where the symmetry comes from. So, and it's easy to see, easy to imagine that if you have similar situation where you have a rather irrational eigenvalue, for example, quadratic irrational, then you can always switch them. So automorphism of the uh, field uh, obtained by adjoining the eigenvalues always give rise to uh, switching eigen, eigenspaces, so that gives rise to commuting primitive eigenvalues. 
So that's where the, the explanation for the symmetry. So we have seen that this uh, field automorphism permits two eigenvalues. So it permits uh, two uh, primitive eigenvalues. But if you look at this two by two matrix, there is uh, another kind of symmetry. You may think of this symmetry as a permuting rows, not columns. I describe the symmetry as permuting columns because E1 corresponds to this middle column, E2 corresponds to the last column. The, the application of this uh, automorphism switches theta plus and theta minus, so this theta plus and this theta minus, and this theta minus, and this theta plus, so E1, E2 switch. That's the explanation for the uh, for the, the for the, the automorphism. In other words, if you apply this automorphism entry-wise to this matrix, this is the second eigen matrix, by the way, second eigen matrix, then it results in column permutation because it permutes the this column and that column. So it's same as multiplying some permutation matrix, in this case, permutation uh, second and third upon switch, the permuting, uh, this uh, multiplying so the permutation matrix from the right, that results in column permutation. But uh, if you look at this two by two block, you, can, you might as well uh, permute the second row by the third row. Well, uh, this is not quite uh, 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 rigorous, but uh, you may think of that the, the, if you exchange theta plus and theta minus, then you might say that it, it certainly results in row permutation, then it, you may think of this as a uh, row permutation that is same as uh, if you invert the matrix, it gives us a corner permutation. So if you apply this uh, field automorphism, these two columns are switched. But then what these two columns correspond? They correspond to now this time adjacency matrices. Well, but I explained what the field automorphism does. In this case, in the first case, it is no problem because field automorphism act entry-wise to matrices whose entries are from F, so it changes entries. So that is the reason why we have E1, E2 switched. But how do we explain the second situation? In the second situation, the, certainly if you apply field automorphism, then this column and this column are switched. But that results in exchanging adjacent symmetries. Well, that's really weird because adjacent symmetrices have entry 0 and 1. How could field automorphisms exchange them? So that is the main point I want to explain in the next slide. So in a commutative association scheme, we have uh, adjacent symmetrices and primitive idempotence. And uh, the, the, uh, we are interested in the field obtained by extending the rational by adjoining the, uh, those uh, eigenvalues. Pij are eigenvalues, so I might as well adjoin all of them. Well, P and Q are uh, inverse to each other. The adjoining all of them, Pij, is same as adjoining Q and J, so there's no distinction between. Well, in general, they could be a complex number. Well, we are not clear, right? They, they are algebraic integers. At least P and are algebraic integers. But you may think, if, you, if you, you may think of the complex numbers, but I don't need a uh, complex number. I don't need transcendent numbers. Uh, if sigma is an automorphism, is an automorphism of this field, then it permutes. We uh, ask this uh, the field elements, and it results in permutation of, of identical things that we have seen. So that results in column permutation of Q. But what we are not sure about is that now 
do they permute adjacency matrices? Well, we can say that adjacency, they permute adjacency matrices. We, 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 we can provide the same reasoning as this one. The, the point is, the reason why sigma must permute the primitive idempotent is that it's, it's sigma is an automorphism of the algebra. So it, it, it preserves the algebra multiplication, and the, the primitive idempotents are uniquely determined as the pairwise uh, formal basis of this. So the algebra structure completely determines primitive idempotence, so the automorphism algebra preserves the set of idempotence. So that is why you get the permutation. Now, the adjacency algebra, adjacency matrices are basis of different sense. They are also the primitive idempotence with respect to this, the other multiplication, entry as multiplication. So if this sigma in some sense induces uh, multiplication of entry-wise product, then we can say that sigma permutes this. And then, if sigma permutes adjacency matrices, then certainly it results in the column permutation of the eigenmetrics, first eigenmetrics. But it's not clear how you can, uh, sigma could, introduce, uh, could induce uh, automorphism, which preserve uh, entry-wise product, well, if you apply sigma entry-wise, then certainly it produces uh, uh, automorphism, but, they, uh, but then they, they, it acts trivially because these are zero-one metrics. That's not what we want. So here is the explanation that uh, sigma can induce two different automorphisms. One, is the entry-wise automorphism, which results in the automorphism of the ordinary multiplication. The other is defined in a little bit different way. So I have to distinguish because they are different uh, by junction of the same adjacency algebra as a vector space. So, so sigma prime is defined exactly in the same way as sigma. But the, the only difference is that the sigma uh, is defined entry-wise. Now, sigma prime, this is defined by uh, on, on this on the on the set of primitive idempotents and extend f linearly. So it, it it has nothing. It it does nothing on the coefficients. This is the difference between sigma and sigma prime. Sigma prime will also change the coefficients, not, of course, the changes idempotent, but also coefficients. So this sigma and sigma prime are definitely different over uh, f. But then sigma prime will become an uh, automorphism of the entry-wise product algebra, provided the crime parameters are rational. Let's see why. So crime parameters are defined in this manner. The, this, the coefficients with, of the, this expansion. So let's apply sigma prime on both sides. Okay, so you have sigma prime on both sides. But the, how do we apply sigma prime? I, we don't know sigma prime preserve the entry-wise product. So we have to first uh, uh, expand the product in terms of linear combination. But then sigma prime acts like sigma on each primitive idempotence. So sigma goes here. Yeah, but then, then I use the fact that these crime parameters are rational. So sigma does nothing on crime parameters because uh, the, every field automorphism fixes rational numbers, so sigma fixes rational numbers, so it is the same as applying sigma entry-wise on this entire matrix. But then this is just the expansion. This is just the expansion, so I guess EI circle EJ inside sigma. But then sigma is an entry-wise application, so it does reserve entry-wise product, so I have this one. But then, on the basis, sigma is same as sigma prime. So sigma e i is same as sigma sigma e i is sigma same as sigma prime because of that definition. So 
I found the Sigma Pride preserves entry rights multiplication on the basis so it, it preserves because Sigma Prime has extended F linearly, so it preserves uh, all entry wise multiplication. So it is an automorphism with respect to the entry wise multiplication. So it means it preserves the, the set of adjacent symmetries. So it preserves the set, so it, but it could not be it. So there is some permutation why, such that if you map, map uh, AI by sigma prime, then it becomes some other adjacent symmetries, like this one. If you apply sigma to the entry wise to the primitive eigen important, it becomes some other uh, primitive value. So this is the explanation of the two, di two different symmetry I have in the pentagon. Uh, in the pentagon, this QIJK is rational. In fact, the QIJK is the same as the IJK. OK. Now, this is a, is a bit of uh, dense computation, so I will uh, go over uh, slowly. So I, for given a computation, given a field of automorphism, I created two different linear mapping. One, see, one of the linear mapping is just the entry-wise multiplication, entry-wise application sigma, so I just denote by sigma itself. The other sigma prime, which is with, which is, is which uh, preserves entry-wise multiplication, so it uh, results in permutation of adjacent symmetries. So I have some permutation matrix Px. Well, uh, the way I defined permutation matrix was that it is supposed to act on the column vector, but here I have a row vector, so the, the, this uh, change of indices by permutation x is really the transpose of the permutation matrix, but it, it's not that. So it's not that pretty good. So uh, we have two permutation x and y, which permutes uh, the primitive identities and uh, adjacent matrices. Now they are connected by first the second eigenmatrix Q. So uh, let's use let's apply sigma here. So let's apply sigma on both sides. Then, uh, if you apply sigma on the left hand side, you get this transpose of Px. On the right hand side, sigma is applied entry wise to these matrices. So, there's nothing happening on these matrices, but the, the, the entries of Q are uh, mapped under the field of office, so it becomes sigma Q. Okay, now uh, let's move this uh, PF transpose to the other side, so that the left hand side is the same as the original equation. Yeah, so if I move, my, I move this PF transpose to the other side, then it becomes PF. But then it is same as this equation, so I can uh, equate these two to get the Q is equal to sigma Q of PX. Now, take the inverse of both sides, the inverse of the second eigenmatrix it is just the first eigenmatrix of this scalar. So if I invert this, this matrix equation, then I get P becomes Q becomes P, and sigma Q becomes sigma P, and of course the order of the product has to be changed, and, and Px is Px inverse, which is transpose. So I, I then move this Px to the left side, so I get this equation. Sigma P is the same as Px times P. Okay, so that's one way to, uh, that, that's the multiple manipulation uh, associated to the one permutation sigma. Now the other, uh, I can do similarly, so I start with this uh, uh, definition of sigma prime, to apply sigma prime on, on this defining equation of the first side matrix. Okay, so I apply sigma prime on the left hand side. Now, what does it, uh, what will happen on the right hand side? Well, right on the right hand side, sigma prime is defined in terms of the basis e i, okay, and uh, extended linearly. 
So it does nothing on P. Sigma prime will map these eigenpotents just like sigma and extend it linearly, so it, has, it does nothing on P. Then this equation can be used. So sigma prime of the left hand side is same as, well, this is the permutation y I get by sigma prime, so I get this one. And on the right hand, the right hand side, we uh, on the other hand, right hand, right hand side, we know what, what it, that is because the sigma acts entry-wise on these matrices, and that results in the permutation x. So that's what we have here. Okay. Then uh, to to compare with the original equation, I have to move this py to the other side. So py to the other side. Okay, then now left hand side is this one, a0 to at, so I can compare it with the original equation. And so if I break then this single p has to be equal to this matrix. So that's what I got on. At the last line, p is equal to this matrix. So I move this p x to the left, so I get px times p is p times vy. But the px times p is there, here, px times p is there. So this is sigma p. So sigma p is equal to p times py. So these two different equations uh, describe the image of automorphism of sigma, uh, automorphism of p under the same field automorphism in two different ways. One is permutation matrix. Uh, multiply from the left, the other from the right. Remember, when we had a pentagon that was a, uh, that had a symmetry on two ways, column and row permutation. And this is the basis that uh, allows one to uh, commute two different automorphisms, uh, not sigma and sigma prime, but you take two different field automorphisms and you may think of one acting from the right and the other acting from the left, then associativity guarantees that they commute. So let's take two automorphisms of the field, sigma and tau. Well, first I take sigma, then there are two permutations uh, which realize uh, the image of this sigma p in two different ways, p and uh, left. Permit, uh, permutation matrix from the left or permutation matrix from the right. The same is true if I take another uh, field of this now, then I have some other permutation Z1, ZW of the set of indices which realize this image in two different ways. But then I don't need all of them, I need only two of them. That is, sigma p realized as Column permutation, tau of p realized as row permutation. Then it's quite easy to see that the application of sigma and tau, uh, the order does not matter because one is a row permutation, the other column permutation, and they commute. So what I get as a result is that the sigma and tau commute. So it doesn't matter with which one I start with because one can be realized as a row permutation or the other one permutation. So the, the consequence I get is that this field, is, the automorphism, is a linear. Well, I only consider the entries of P, but the entries of P generates the field L. So, so it completely determines the two automorphisms and they have to be the same. So sigma tau is equal to tau sigma, so the group of automorphisms of the field is a bit. So that is the uh, small observation I made in 91, and it resulted in a very short paper, obviously. In so uh, I would call this field F the splitting field of association scheme. Uh, that is field obtained by adjoining all eigenvalues or all entries of the eigenmatrix 
uh, to the rational field. Now, this is called the uh, uh, splitting field. And uh, the automorphism group of this field is also known as the Galois group. Well, if you are not familiar with the Galois theory, then you, you, should, you, uh, you should know some field extension, not Galois extension, but this one is Galois extension because you just adjoin all eigenvalues of several matrices, so it is the same as uh, splitting field of the, all the product of the characteristic matrices of the adjacent matrix. Uh, it is known that splitting field of uh, uh, a polynomial is a Galois group when characteristic is zero. A Galois field, a Galois extension when it is uh, characteristic zero. So uh, there's no worry about uh, the extension being Galois. So uh, automorphic group is usually denoted by this Galois group, so it's Galois of f over q. Uh, this q here is a little bit redundant. Uh, normally, this uh, Normally, uh, it is just a homomorphism of f, but uh, uh, at the uh, right side of the slash, you, you specify a field you want to fix, but the, the rational field is always fixed, so this is some, uh, some, some kind of redundancy. But you will see uh, different fields later. So, what I proved here is that this equilibrium scheme has rational time parameter, then that argument goes through and I get the uh, Abelian Galois group. But Abelian, having Abelian Galois group is already enough to, uh, to conclude that the eigenvalues belong to cyclotomic field, because there is a very famous old theorem in number theory that, said, uh, that is called Kronecker Weber theorem. Uh, if you, you know the Galois group of a rational is abelian, then it immediately implies that the, the, this f is contained in the cyclotomic field. So, in particular, all the eigenvalues belong to the cyclotomic field. Uh, so, this is the uh, precise statement of Kronecker uh, field, like Weber theorem. Uh, it is proved by Hilbert in 1896. Uh, I don't know why it is called connected Weber theorem. Maybe there are too many Hilbert theorem, or, or, but uh, it is first stated by Kronecker. But uh, Kronecker wasn't able to prove, uh, neither Weber, uh, finally Hilbert proved that statement. But it's clearly the, 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 the statement is so uh, easy to understand and very short. So. It's, I think it should be a, a correct attribute to Kronecker who found this statement. So, if you have a field extension, finite extension of the rational field, field whose Galois field, finite Galois extension, that is, whose Galois field is available, then the, there is a positive integer L such that this, this field F is a sort of a subfield of Z. So, they, they are cyclotomic numbers. So, still, the, I haven't uh, the, solved the, the, the open problem posed in my mind because of it. So, the, still, the problem remains but the, the, whether it, it is possible or not to show for arbitrary commutative association scheme with splitting field F. Is the Galois group abelian? We, we know, I mean, I show that it is abelian if QIJJ are rational. But in general, there are association schemes uh, whose prime parameter are irrational. Well, Pentag for the Pentagon, it is rational, but uh, for some other scheme, I will show you later an example, and you will find more examples in my paper. But there are association schemes. In fact, a symmetric or commutative one, still uh, you have irrational prime graphic. Okay, uh, the same theorem, in, uh, same proof shows uh, a little bit more precise statement. Remember, in the proof of the commutativity, I, I didn't use the, the uh, four equations, the 
as I took two different automorphisms in the field, and I conclude that, that they are commutative. Well, if you take one automorphism in the field, then there are two equations they, they must satisfy. But I didn't use all, both of them. I used only one of them. So, but uh, for two different automorphisms, I used two, two different properties. So if you look at this, how I use in the proof, then I use two different assumptions on the automorphism. So if you, if you just uh, carefully check the proof, then what is really proved by that argument is this theorem. So uh, the DPCs are just setting up the notation, but uh, here I can see the a subfield of uh, generated by prime parameters. Uh, prime parameter uh, can be written in terms of eigenvalue values. There are, uh, there are formula to express prime parameter in terms of eigenvalue. The other is not possible because the eigenvalues are not, uh, in general, you have to solve polynomial equation, so the other uh, way is not true, but the prime parameter can be written in terms of uh, eigenvalues. So this field is a subfield of F. But then you can consider Galois group for F over K, that is the field automorphism which is identity on this subfield. That means you fix all the prime parameters. If you fix all prime parameters, then the argument I show goes through. Because if you fix prime parameter, then it results in the uh, automorphism of the algebra of entry price product. So the commutativity follows, and what it means is that this is this element in this dialog group commutes with every other element that is it is contained in the center of the entire dialog group. Well, if f is k is equal to q to q, that is prime parameter or rational, then this is same as that, so it belongs to its own center, so the group has to be a bit. That's what I said earlier. So if this is the case, then the Galois group is a billion, so by chemical wavelength theory, uh, the, it is contained inside the atomic field. Now, uh, after publishing this uh, result, I was really uh, astonished by uh, um, a paper which was written by a physicist. Um, it is essentially the same statement, but they don't, they don't discuss association scheme. Uh, I think uh, he, he, it is partly close to Matsuo, and uh, maybe Norman Weinberg also mentioned that there are uh, concepts of fusion group algebra. And uh, physicists are interested in this uh, structure of fusion group algebra, and they consider something very similar to association scheme. And uh, in particular, they consider very similar thing like uh, these uh, eigenmatrix and the algebraic property, in particular, this uh, uh, Galois group of that uh, extension of that extension. So it was proved in the paper uh, by Coste and Gamon. Uh, the, the, they consider some Galois symmetry that they're exactly the same thing, a rational form of field theory that they tell us. The, the fusion rule algebra, which is almost the same as the center of the adjacent algebra of association scheme, but they don't have association scheme actually. So, this was uh, published in physics journal uh, in 94. Uh, I, I got a, a chance to see this uh, Terry Ganon in the year 2000. Uh, there was a conference organized by also Sasha in, in, in California, and uh, we uh, we uh, we are very happy to talk to each other. And then now, uh, since then, in this century, now we, we are kind of friends. I mean, the the topic are not very far away to each other because we, like the, uh, the work of the goodness of very much related to form of field theory. So the, the theory of association schemes. At that time, we, I thought it was quite astonishing, but nowadays uh, we are very close. 
Okay, so here is a summary of what I did. Uh, therefore, the community association scheme, the identity adjacent scheme belongs to uh, psychodomic people. Uh, no, no, I should say this is a conjecture. I mean, we'll come to open the road. Okay. Yeah. Um, it is unknown. I know, I'm sorry. So that is correct. So in the first line, I consider the, the association scheme coming from the group. In that case, it is true that the eigenvalues can be written in terms of, micro, in terms of uh, uh, character, so they don't belong to psychotomic belief. But uh, it is unknown whether the same statement is true for community association scheme in general. And uh, what I proved was that the if Russian can't prime parameters are rational, they are indeed true. And uh, the, the here is an example of uh, uh, association scheme. In fact, they, they come from group that the crime parameters are not rational. Uh, there are many other examples, but uh, the, this is the more easiest to understand because already uh, several people mentioned the funnel plane. Funnel plane is the smallest projected plane consisting of seven points and seven lines. And uh, if you consider anti flags, so anti flag, there are 28 anti flags because if you fix a point, then there are four lines not uh, incident with them, so seven times four, 28 point, the vertices graph, and uh, it is a rank five uh, community association scheme. And for that association scheme, the crime parameters are irrational. So that uh, the, the my theory uh, uh, doesn't work. But the uh, crime parameters are rational, but the eigenvalues are also not that uh, complicated. It's just a quadratic expansion square root of two. So so this is also contained in the cycle. So uh, we don't know many community association schemes whose eigenvalues are uh, non psychotomic So that still remains a open problem. Okay, so uh, to finish off, uh, let me show you some references. Uh, most of the uh, material are already contained in the, the, the famous like, uh, Ito, except the very final one. The final one is my own result, so uh, it is contained in this third reference. Uh, this, uh, the formula for the central primitive idempotence uh, in, in general can be found in the second reference, uh, uh, Curtis and Fossa. Okay. And uh, uh, I already mentioned the third one. The fourth one is one of the many uh, books on uh, algebraic number theory, which uh, gives a proof of a Kronecker theory. Well, there are no new ones, but this is uh, rather old, 72. And uh, Scott proved his theorem in 77 in this paper, uh, published in Journal of The last one, uh, I didn't exclusively use this, but the, the last one, I, I want to mention this because it's a, a very appropriate book in general representation theory of finite group. Although the title says uh, uh, representation of the symmetric group, but the first two chapters are uh, representation theory of uh, general finite group. So this book is very appropriate for those who want to uh, get solid knowledge of representation of finite group, uh, which I didn't explain because I somehow uh, explain intuitively using metrics, but uh, uh, you should uh, learn by reading such textbook if you want to uh, get solid knowledge of this uh, representation theory. Um, moreover, um, this Ceccherini silver sign, uh, if you look at the back of the book of abstracts, you find this uh, page. And uh, if you look at it closely, you have an announcement of lecture of next conference 
And the soup here, you find chicken soup, and you also have that giving that should be some public representation. So if you are interested in it, uh, it's a must to attend the next uh, summer school. Uh, I met him uh, two years ago, Chekere in Silver, relatively recently. It is only two years ago in, uh, in a conference in China. Uh, but I, uh, the, his name uh, looked familiar, it sounded familiar to me. Uh, so I asked him, uh, but I, I think I met a uh, mathematician whose name is Chekarini. So he immediately said, that is my father. Oh, so his father, uh, Chekarini, is a participant of this legendary conference in 91, which took place in Vladimir, Russia. So I, I met his father 27 years ago in Vladimir, and, and this uh, speaker is the son of, of that tradition. Uh, so this concludes my lecture. So, but uh, I, I want to uh, say a few more words. That the I hope the, the lecture are helpful for students who want to learn. Uh, Finite groups, representation theory, and association schemes. And uh, uh, I, I try to avoid uh, the, the abstract concepts by uh, representing by, in terms of matrices. But uh, definitely, if you want to get solid knowledge, you should read the book like two deals. And but I hope uh, uh, the, uh, by attending lecture, uh, I think it, it, you have less trouble in reading the book. Usually the book is, represent, is presented in an abstract manner, so in the first time when you read such a book, it may be quite difficult in the beginning, but I hope my lecture will uh, pass me so that uh, problem. Uh, and well, finally, I want to thank the organizers for giving me an opportunity to uh, give this lecture series. And especially to Sasha Ivanov for chairing the lectures, and also uh, it was a great privilege for him, for, for me, that he is chairing and he is assisting the, my lecture by uh, certifying the uh, exercise program I, I, I wrote. I, I gave him whether this is appropriate, and he immediately checked the exercise program, and this is a very wonderful one. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments? Or yes. Thank you very much.